Well, hello, people out there. <laughs> this is Vernon Moore with Passover Deliverance Ministries. And uh, I've been off the air for a few months now. I had some things going on there, but now I'm back to where I can uh, get back online here. And I'm going to try to start having my broadcast twice a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays around 8 p.m. Now, you all pray for me that I won't be lazy and be slacking off because, well, well, uh, I get to be a slacker sometimes. And now, well, I don't have any audio for the audio music yet for this, uh, for this broadcast. I'm going to have to work on that, but uh, anyway, I'll get that taken care of eventually. Now, I'm uh, kind of trying something new here. I am also uh, videotaping myself with my webcam while doing this, and I'll put this on YouTube. So everybody on YouTube, hey, and people on uh, Facebook will see me. <coughs> <coughs> but anyway, now uh, uh, my organization is uh, Passover Deliverance Ministries. This is a deliverance ministry. And uh, it's, uh, it's a registered entity with the state of Indiana. And, uh, well, you go there for more contact information for, like, uh, in case you need prayer requests or something or deliverance. And uh, I, I kind of travel a little bit, but not a whole lot. Now, I'm up here in Marion, Indiana, Grant County. So, uh, I can't really like travel 2,000 miles away to see somebody, but I can always uh, do research online and see if there's a, a minister in your area that can help. And uh, on my website there, with, there should be a link on the description of this program. And uh, that'll give you some information. I'm going to try to put uh, some ministers on there as time goes by. <clears throat> and also um, somebody else here on uh, blog talk uh, there's Omega Man Radio with Shannon Davis I think he's on there from 7pm until he's done with whatever he's doing so remember Omega Man Radio also now I uh, always like to say uh Try to make some announcements before we get into the program part. Now, my home church is uh, Miracle Missions Church of the Living God in Union City, Indiana. And uh, that's at 8472 South, 800 East. And that's like halfway between Union City and Portland, Indiana, in Jay County, about a mile from the Randolph County line. And uh, that's the pastor Dan Hill that ministers there. And their Sunday service usually starts around 1030. And uh, Miracle Missions was founded by Herman and, Herman and Mary Finnick of Union City, Indiana. At least I'm pretty sure it's a Union City, Indiana address. But anyway. Now up here in Marion, I go to uh, Calvary Assembly. And that's at 815 Bradford Street. That's the pastor Ben Watkins that ministers there. And let's see. Uh, I've got their... Here it is. Their Sunday morning worship starts at 10.30 a.m. Sunday prayer service, 6 p.m. Wednesday adult Bible study, 6.30 p.m. And the Sunday prayer service, it's really just dedicated to prayer. So there's really no sermon. Just bring up your prayer request and people will sit around praying for about an hour. And that's, uh, remember, Calvary Assembly at 815 Bradford Street, Marion, Indiana. And that's uh, Reverend Ben Watkins that ministers there. 
Now, that's all the church announcements I can think of at this time. But uh, if anyone has a, a church announcement that they'd like to go on here, or, you know, send me a, an email at burn7us at yahoo.com. So if you got something going on at your church, just let me know and I can announce it on air. Except for that one, uh, there's that one Baptist church, so I, can't, I forgot the name of it, but uh, they're always protesting at funerals and they're always holding up signs that says God hates gay people. Now you you know the one I'm talking about though that I don't uh, I don't want to associate with that church at all. Those guys are just wrong. But anyway, so that's uh, all the announcements I can think of. <clears throat> now if you email me with a uh, prayer or deliverance request, just say in the subject line like deliverance request, prayer need or something, just so I know what it is. Because uh, sometimes I get some spam email just just like anyone else does well I had to unplug my house phone so it don't ring during this all right another announcement if uh, you're looking for a good book to read which is dark inspirational Christian fiction where the group of young adults uh, working together and fighting against the forces of darkness Look for the book called Look Past Lodabar. And uh, you can find that at candensmorebooks.com. And there should be a link to that site on the description of this program. And what else? Uh, that's all I can think of right now. But I also, uh, I don't think I've got this uh, link on the listed, but uh, go to aviadcohen.com I believe that's the name of his site but if you type in Aviad Cohen and uh, he's a messianic Jewish singer and uh, you bring up his website and you can uh, buy some of his music and download it make a donation if you want you know now I'm not saying you absolutely have to but you know, go to his site buy a couple of songs you know so remember, Aviad Cohen. And let's see. Now on my site, of course, I've got a um, a donate button. So donate if you want. But remember, your tithes go to your home church. Your tithes do not go to me. They go to your home church. Remember that. But if you want to send me an offering, okay. So anyway... But I'm not one of those prosperity preachers that's where they say, give me $63 and God will give you a million. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't do that. And I'm drinking coffee while doing this. So anyway, uh, wait, um, let's get on. And uh, there should be a copy of the sinner's prayer on the description of this program. Because this is all about getting souls saved and seeing God glorified. But anyway, you're going to go into a time of prayer, all right? So what I want you, want everybody to do is uh, think of the prayer need you have. Like healing or deliverance or, you know, loved one that needs something. And Well, I'll be praying for it. Praying for people's healing, praying for um, deliverance from demons and such. Now, during this time, I'm going to call off things, of course. But if I don't necessarily call yours off by word of knowledge, you know, or by chance, I'm still automatically standing in agreement with you about it so that your need will be met. And uh, you can re. I mean, you don't have to call in for this one. Just wherever you're sitting at, <laughs> however you're listening, you just kind of raise your hand and just say your request. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to name it off with just where you're sitting at. Give you a couple seconds, and I'll be back to start praying for it. So, okay, just... 
Go ahead and name them all. Okay. Siandaremo ko shandaremo so. Yes, I speak in tongues and use anointing oil. Lord Jesus, I ask that you'll meet the needs of those people out there, whatever that need is, Lord. Lord, I automatically stand in agreement with that person for what that need is, <laughs> for their healing, for their deliverance. And uh, even if they name somebody off, whatever that need is, Lord, I automatically stand in agreement with them about it. And I know you're in agreement, Lord. I ask that you'll meet that need. Now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the irritable bowel syndrome in somebody. IBS, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and I command you out of that person right now. Come out of him right now in the name of Jesus. Be ye healed and made whole in the name of Jesus right now, whoever you are. And uh, some kind of toothache, pain, or tooth decay or something in somebody God is healing that tooth decay be thou made whole in the name of Jesus I command that the bad teeth be healed and the missing teeth grow back in the name of Jesus right now Lord I pray for mental stability in somebody out there fluctuating hormones Lord that you'd fix that and somebody's pregnancy I see, Lord, that um, they're kind of worried about it probably or concerned or even just requesting extra prayer, Lord. I ask that you'll make that pregnancy normal, and the delivery normal, normal, healthy child, Lord, full of the knowledge of you, full of your spirit, Lord, and wisdom. Yea, Lord, ask for prosperity on the people. And whoever out there likes to eat eggs, Lord, I ask that you'll provide that person with plenty of good eggs to eat. Poached eggs or whatever. And bacon. All right. Somebody's thinking about breakfast. It might be that somebody is worried about breakfast that where they think that they're wondering where it's coming from. Lord, I ask that you'll provide them with the breakfast. The dinner and the supper, even little snacks and meals in between, Lord, that they'll be provided with so much food and provision that they'll be giving some of it away, Lord. Even good pinto beans and cornbread. Lord, I ask that you'll put that blessing on them, everyone out there. Even cornbread, milk, goat's milk, whatever. Lord, we settle the stomachs of the people out there somebody has an upset stomach Lord ask that you'll heal them and deliver them of that people you do not have to smoke marijuana to get your stomach to feel better don't go for marijuana don't do it Lord I also ask that you'll cause that marijuana to taste really bad to that person and whoever is out there doing that if someone requested prayer for somebody that smokes marijuana, and I curse that marijuana in the name of Jesus and command it out. And somebody haunted by the demons of the mind, all you devils, I rebuke you and I bind you in the name of Jesus and I command you out. And devils, I automatically rebuke and bind you in the name of Jesus even if I don't actually say it. Now all the demons in that person's house, whoever that is, it runs up and down the stairs, around in the kitchen, whatever. And all demons in the houses that the people want out. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you and I bind you and I command you out of there now. Go to the dry places now and don't you come back. Stop dragging the people out of the bed right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord... Somebody with the sickness of headaches all the time, migraines. Lord, I ask that you'll heal that person. And I speak to that devil that causes that sickness. I rebuke you and I bind you in the name of Jesus. 
And I command you to leave right now. If you saw anybody or saw Hyundai, and someone like somebody's deaf, someone else is hard of hearing, wearing hearing aids, I rebuke those foul, deaf, and dumb spirits in the name of Jesus and command them out of the people right now. I command the ears to pop now and open up now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command the blind eyes open, the tongue loosed. I command the cancers out of the people now and all lumps and all growths to go now in the name of Jesus. Go, spirit of wandering, go in the name of Jesus. Go. If you see on my Nicoria Sabai BC, Nicoria Sabai BC, Lord, somebody wants to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I ask, Lord, that you'll baptize them in the Holy Ghost and with fire right now, this very hour, Lord. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues, Lord. And the other gifts of the Spirit as you see fit, Lord. Give us all discernment and wisdom, Lord, including me. I need more of it and more faith. Lord, I pray for faith to come upon the people right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I speak to the person that's I felt as though they'd been hit in the head, like maybe in the back of the head, maybe, but wherever they they feel like they've been hit in the head. I command that head to be healed now in the name of Jesus. Shock to the nervous system, come out now in the name of Jesus. Belial, I rebuke you and I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I command you to leave right now. Wow, we come out of somebody there. And you going into the dry places where you belong? Or somebody else there that's not entirely mentally stable? They're mentally challenged, it looks like, in some way. I'm not sure the, what the condition is. Could be cerebral palsy, I'm not sure. But whatever that condition is, Lord, I ask that you'll heal the people from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. That you'll straighten their ankle bones out, leg bones and knee bones, Lord. In their spine, a whole skeletal system. And that one right there, Lord, that whose legs are too big and keep growing. I ask that you'll heal that person. That you'll straighten those legs up and make them whole now in the name of Jesus. Let them be shrunk down now, or shrunk down now in the name of Jesus, to the correct size, Lord. You know how to do it. I ask that you'll do it in the name of Jesus. Fibromyalgia pain, I curse you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to go out of that person now. Go out of her. Go out of him right now in the name of Jesus. And don't you ever come back. In somebody's homework, Lord, I ask that you give that person good concentration to get their homework done and have good grades. Lord, please bless the people with high uh, intelligence, Lord, but a zeal and knowledge of you, Lord. Lord, please save, heal, and deliver everybody. Lord, this might be coming from my own mind, but if there's going to be an earthquake in Minnesota, I ask for mercy for Minnesota that you'll delay that earthquake or stop it or just reduce it to where the people know it happened, but no damage done in the name of Jesus. It could be, I could be seeing an earthquake around St. Paul, Minnesota. Maybe. But don't ask me the time or date. But that that part about the earthquake, that just that might just be me saying it, thinking it. 
because it's like a lot lately though I've been kind of paranoid about earthquakes it seems like but if there's a earthquake going to happen in Minnesota or even St. Paul Minnesota Lord I ask that you'll reduce it to where it won't do any damage like maybe 3.9 3.7 at the most Lord you yeah, Lord and I ask that you'll give the homeless people their homes and that one right there I, I forgot who that is Lord that I'm thinking of Lord you know that person you're going to deliver them uh, Lord please cover them please bring all the homeless people in to where they can have homes their jobs their health their confidence and faith Lord and salvation Lord please bring them all in Lord and please save those people of whoever it is please deliver them from every demon from all the heroin and cocaine and crystal meth and crack and everything Lord and I curse that crocodile drug in the name of Jesus and command it to go Lord I ask that you'll meet the needs of every person there Lord in Jesus name Amen alright so uh, anyone got a prayer or praise request Send me an email at vern7us at yahoo.com. I might have that, my email, on the description of this program, but I forgot if I do, so I forget things sometimes, but anyway. Now let me get up to where I was going to be at here. All right. Now I'm going to... The verse, well, what I'm going to be talking about is um, the blood of the sacrifice. And uh, I always like to read out of Isaiah chapter 14 so I can remind the devil of his defeat. And he hates it when you remind him of his defeat. But oh well, devil, that ain't my problem. You're going to the pit. Now people remember, the devil is a defeated enemy. And the only power he has over us is what we give him and what we allow him to have. And some people out there, all right, they don't actually give the devil permission or power or authority, but by them not doing anything, like too afraid to stand up and not knowing how to fight against or whatever, they'll give the devil a foothold anyway. That happens sometimes. But uh, we've got to learn how to fight against them. Now, we don't fight against them in ourselves, all right? No. The Word of God does that. We are here to do what God says. God will produce the results. Now, I'm going to read to you out of Isaiah chapter 14, verses 11 through 15. And... Uh, this is to remind the devil of his defeat. <laughs> All right. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave in the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And Jesus even said in there, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It also says in Isaiah somewhere, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Right, so, and it also says that God will give his angels charge over us, that they'll bear us up if we dash our foot against a stone. But also, remember, it also says 
Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So just because the angels are here to protect us, and they will, does not mean we can go out and do something stupid and expect them to just, uh, like, save us from getting hurt. Because if we're out doing something stupid we know we shouldn't be doing, we're going to get hurt. Most of the time, sometimes, oh, God has mercy and won't let it happen, but if we're tempting God, well, that's a bad idea. You know, I'm still drinking my coffee. Now, tonight's guest call-in number is 661-449-9350. And if my friend John is um, listening in, I say, Hi, John. Hey. Still praying for you, John. I'm not going to give up either. You're on my prayer list. I say prayers over my whole list every day. All right? Now, I'm not going to say your last name over the air, of course, but if you're listening, hello, John. I'll eventually get back to see you sometime. All right. And Lord, I ask that you'll heal John completely. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, that you'll deliver him from every demonic influence. Yea, Lord. He obviously loves you and you love him. And healing is a children's bread. So, Lord, I ask that you'll heal John. In the name of Jesus. Now, let me get back to my verses here, the blood of the sacrifice. Now here in uh, Leviticus 17, 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Yeah, I went from Leviticus to Exodus. <laughs> Exodus is first, but oh well. See, right there it says the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Without the blood, you don't have life. All right. Now, here in Exodus 12 and 23, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Alright. Now you know the story like the night before they left Egypt uh, they put the blood the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and lintel so that uh, the angel of death would not enter into that house. And all the firstborn of Egypt died that night. But the land of Goshen was saved. Here it says, And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. So the blood was always sprinkled on the altar. So you see, the blood is what covers the sin. Right? So, when God looks down and if he sees sin, then he knows the blood does not cover it and the person's not repenting. But if he looks down and he just sees the blood, then he don't see the sin. Now you see, this is like uh, in day-to-day -day life out of people where there's this like hyper-grace doctrine where it's like just... Hmm, if I can explain it, they think that since we're under mercy and grace, that um, that gives us a license to sin. All right, and well, people they believe in that doctrine. They just go out and do, do just whatever they want to do, and they always uh, holler about, "Oh, you can't judge that person. That only God can judge them, and whatever." 
And, uh, you know, I once, uh, I was debating with somebody on Facebook, a lesbian, and I made the post saying, well, um, here's the King James Bible. If you can show me in this book right here where it says gayness is all right, then I'll shut up. Well, you see, not one person ever showed me in there where it said gayness was all right. One person said, you've got to love that person. That's what the Bible says. Well, yeah, the Bible does say you got to love the person, but that don't say that gayness is all right. But anyway, this is like, uh, goes to where, it's like with any other kind of sin, not just perversion, but any other kind of sin out there. If you're out in the world flaunting your sin, then say you've got salvation, you've got like eternal security or whatever, but you're out there flaunting your sin and never repenting of it, then that sin is not under the blood. God does not see the blood. He sees the sin. And God won't look upon sin. So seeing how that sin is out in the open and not under the blood, then you're saying that you want to pay the price for the sin. And if you want to pay the price for your sin, then, well, you'll have to pay the price for your sin. So if you're out there flaunting your sin, then your sin is not covered by the blood. Then that means you'd still be under the law. You're only under mercy and grace if you'll repent. And uh, even uh, during the Old Testament days, under the law, God didn't automatically strike somebody down dead as soon as they sinned he gave them plenty of chances to repent he does that to everybody so don't wait don't wait too long to repent and nobody knows when their time is up so if somebody is out there flaunting their sin then that sin is not covered by the blood now I'm going to read some more here as soon as I get everything adjusted. People are going to be watching me on YouTube later on. And I don't know what they're going to be thinking. But anyway. John 6 verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Ye have no life in you. And the life of the flesh is in the blood. And Hebrews 10 and 19 saying, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Okay. Um, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. And apparently someone's called me on my cell phone. I forgot to turn that off. But anyway, I'll get to that later. And well, nobody's in the queue yet, so I can't really can't really answer to that yet. But uh, you see, the priest would go in there, go in the Holy of Holies like once a year, sprinkle the blood on the, I believe, the Ark of the Covenant, and make an atonement for the sin of the, the nation. All right? And if the priest himself would have uh, unconfessed sin in his life, <coughs> so if he had sin in his life, he would go into the Holy of Holies and he would drop dead. All right? See, uh, sin, sin does not last long in the presence of God. That's the way it is. Now, let's see. Revelation 1 and 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. 
Now, if I can actually make my mouse move here, got my notes written down in, uh, okay. Okay, I had to adjust everything again. So you see, with, uh, let's say, San Francisco and Los Angeles, they're out there, they flaunt their sin constantly. They're looking up at God saying, I don't care. Just in your face. Yeah, that's what they do. And they say, oh, uh, I don't believe in God, or God loves me, or the Bible says you got to love the person, or quit judging, quit being so judgmental. Why are you judging? Well, when your sin is out in the open, and not just perversion, there's other sins also. But when it's out in the open, then your sin is not covered by the blood. Now, for somebody that is bound up in perversion, and, but they repent of it, they know they want to get free, but and they keep praying that they do get free. Now, that's one thing, all right? And they're making an effort to, to quit doing it, but it's such a, like, a, a strong pull to do that sometimes. And then after they're done, they repent, they feel sorry, and they repent, all right? Now, that's one thing, all right? And apparently I got two missed calls on my cell phone, but I have to call that person back. I got a voicemail. So anyway, now it's just, it's not just perversion. It's all kinds of things, all right? Some people are full of disrespect. Some are full of rebellion. Some are full of witchcraft. I mean, they got all kinds of things. So if you're out there flaunting your sin, the sin is not covered by the blood. Now, you notice where um, as soon as somebody's born, it seems as though the world just casts them out and uh, there's no comfort in the world. The, the world don't comfort you. They always try to run you down and make you feel bad and down. They don't comfort you. They don't attempt to clean up your life or anything. And they just leave you out there, out in the open field, to where you're scared, you're lonely, or whatever kind. It's like that. But here in Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 4, 5, and 6, this describes what God does for people. It says, And as for thy nativity in the day thou wast born, Thy navel was not cut, neither wast thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live live so you see when God comes along he sees somebody out there out in the world out in all the mess and pollution and stuff God looks at the person and says live even though you're dirty live God will clean you up every time and if we are faithful and just to like if we repent of our sins and turn from our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let our heavenly high priest sprinkle the blood on us so that we will be clean. And Job put the, the blood on the altar for his children like every day. But when Job got tempted... Satan killed all the animals and therefore uh, Job had no more blood to put on the altar. But God restored Job. So, um, I think that's about all I got for right now. 
See how much time I got left? I got mm, 20 minutes. Huh, done way early. But I've been out of this for a couple of months and getting back into it. But uh, that's about all for my message. But um, if anyone would like to um, make Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, well, I got a, should be a copy of the Sinner's Prayer on the description of this program. Now, G, the blood of Jesus can cleanse you from anything. It can take you from where you're at, like in the gutter, just stinking, nasty, filthy, with bugs and maggots crawling all over you. The blood of Jesus can clean that completely, clothe you in righteousness, and set you on top of the mountain where you can see everything, where you can see the glory of God. The blood of Jesus can do that. Now, if you want to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, then I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And I want you to not only say the words, but mean the words also. So if you're that one that wants to be saved and have your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, just repeat this prayer after me. All right. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins, Lord. Please forgive me. Lord, I accept you as Lord and Savior. And I invite and ask that you come live in my heart and life now and forever. I ask that you'll write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I forgive those who have wronged me. And I ask that you help me to forgive. I believe you, die, you were born of a virgin. You died on the cross. You rose again. You're the only begotten Son of God. And you're on the right hand of the Father right now. Lord, thank you for coming into my life and writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now if you pray that simple prayer, then uh, you're now saved and on your way to heaven. And uh, ask God for the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And uh, find you a good Bible-based, spirit-filled church somewhere to go to. That's between you and God. But uh, I guess for now, it's like pretty much done. But uh, anyway, remember to send me an email at burn7us at yahoo.com. All right. Until next time, be good and God bless.